Ladies and gentlemen, just prior to AMD's next Horizon event, I covered a new story, which told us that AMD were achieving 4.5 GHz with early engineering silicon for Zen 2. On top of that, they also were achieving between a 10 to 15% IPC gain compared to either Zen or Zen Plus, depending on the workload. Fast forward and Next Horizon has been and gone. And of course, 7NM, yes, we knew that that was going to be the case, but AMD did reinforce several details concerning 7NM, including the fact that the actual I.O. controller was still uh, built on the 14NM process. We also learned that the flagship Epic CPU, Rome, would indeed feature 64 cores, 128 threads. This was not anything that we didn't half expect. After all, the rumours have for some time pointed in that being the direction AMD wanted to go, to really bump that core count up so that Intel would feel the pressure. But we also learned architectural changes that AMD were implementing on the processor itself. Improved instruction prefetch, better branch prediction, increased throughput, drastically improved floating point performance, and just, well, a lot of other stuff. They didn't give us all of the details, of course, and, well, we didn't get clock speed information, but it did appear that AMD were here to play. We also learned through a couple of slides that, well, 29% was the maximum uh, achieved IPC gain that AMD have managed to grab out of the processor so far. However, just yesterday they did release a statement and, of course, confirmed that well, that was a fringe case. We long suspected this, and I actually said so on the channel itself numerous times, there's no way that this is going to be a typical workload, 29%, because that would absolutely be crazy. But in fringe cases, 29%, I could certainly see it, particularly, of course, loads which heavily utilize floating point arithmetic. After all, they did so much to improve that. But still, 10 to 15 percent, that's quite a realistic number given what we've learned about the processor. So, the story isn't new. Intel have had a single thread performance advantage against AMD's Ryzen processors since the company launched them back in April of 2017. That plus a clock speed bump and gamers definitely have preferred Intel. Sure, if you do other work, if you do content creation, virtual machine work, 3D modeling, that type of stuff, AMD have a really good value proposition. Even if you're a streamer and you need to do some coding simultaneously, Ryzen is also a great processor. But since the 7700K, the 8700K, and now the 9900K, gamers, at least in terms of raw frame rate, it is said Intel have just provided the best raw performance. But Intel have also been under a lot of pressure. The 7700K at the time of the Ryzen's processor's launch was only four cores, eight threads, compared to eight cores and 16 threads of Ryzen and a similar price point. AMD just offered better value. And well, what would happen if AMD could increase the IPC of their processors to 10 to 15 percent and they also managed to increase the clock speed as well? After all, it would be more Intel like. And how far are AMD behind this right now? This is also an article which you can find linked, of course, in the video description. So what we did is we took a 2700X and also a 9900K and we set the memory clock speed and timings to be identical. Notice I say we because although I do have a Z390 motherboard, and uh, this review will be coming up pretty soon, along with processor review and a platform uh, overview. I also wanted to spend a lot more time getting IPC performance with this. So my friend uh, in the United States, Matthew, was kind enough to provide me performance numbers for his 9900K, which is a retail sample. So what we did is very simple. We ran the 9900K at 3 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz and did the same with the 2700X. To be clear here, these are locked, so the clock speed cannot vary at all.
I'd also like to be very clear to say that this is not a review of the 9900K and putting it in a fair comparison against the 2700X. The 9900K is capable of way higher clocks than 4 gigahertz even at stock as we all know. So instead this is simple instead this is simply to see how the two processors both 8 cores, both 16 threads, would compare at the same clock speed. And we're going to use various CPU benchmarking applications to see just what type of performance we get out of both. So, with that said, let's have a look at the results and then, well, we'll go from there. So then, now we've seen the benchmarks, what did we learn? Well, it's very obvious that Intel do have a single thread performance, even if the clock speeds are identical. Cinebench, along with CPU-Z, both demonstrated this rather handily. With that said, AMD compete very favorably with heavy multi-threading. So, what we can say here is that if AMD managed to achieve a 4.5 gigahertz-ish uh, clock speed. I personally believe it might even be a little more for final production silicon. I wouldn't be surprised if we, thought, uh, if we saw 4.6, maybe 4.7, particularly when factoring in overclocking. But for this video, I do want to be as conservative as possible. So I do want to say it will just be 4.5 gigahertz. And combine that with, once again, a very conservative 10% IPC gain, my opinion is that AMD will be in a very good position. There are also other things that we need to take into consideration. Will AMD increase the core count for the mainstream processors, which would be, of course, the Ryzen 3000 series? I will actually be doing an in-depth investigation of this. I've already started to do the research, but I wanted to put this video out first because it's, well, it's going to follow on. If you want my opinion right now, just a brief synopsis, I believe that yes, they most likely will increase the core count for the mainstream AM4 platform. Will it go to 16? Possibly not. They may decide to play it safer and stay with 12 simply because of cost. Uh, it depends on their yields of 7nm and what they feel comfortable with in terms of power budget and numerous other things. But once again, we'll explore that in depth in another video soon. Getting back to the here and now though, AMD don't need to beat Intel in every single way. What they do need to do is have a good marketing department, and to be fair to the company, they've done a lot better with that recently. And they also need to be competitive in price. This is definitely something they have managed to achieve very well. After all, if you were to take a look at the uh, 9900K, it's five, six hundred dollars, depending on retailers and sometimes even out of stock. Compare that to a 2700X, and typically that's around the 300 US dollar mark, and well, that's a significant price difference. Yes, the 9900K is faster, without any question, but to the average user, is it worth essentially double the price? Well, Maybe not, particularly when you can couple that with a decent B450 motherboard, and well, that means you can still overclock. Admittedly, the 2700X doesn't clock to the stratosphere, but in terms of sheer value, it's hard to argue when you can get a decent B450 motherboard that doesn't have any bells and whistles, true, but it is a B450 motherboard, does allow you to overclock, and doesn't explode when you plug it in, so it's, it's more than good enough, and you can get one of those for under 100 US dollars. That's 400 US dollars or below for your processor, and of course, your motherboard. So you're still around 
100 to 200 US dollars cheaper than just the 9900K. So what AMD need to do is not necessarily beat Intel in all fronts. They just need to be solid in games so they're not so far behind as they are now. And it is unquestionable that in terms of minimum frame rates, Intel do have the advantage over AMD. So if they can get the minimum frame rates up while also increasing performance across a myriad of other benchmarks and applications, such as once again, 3D rendering and video encoding and so much more besides and sort out other little issues with the platform, such as the uh, such as uh, latency between the caches, which is still noticeable on the 2700X and other Zen Plus processors, I believe that AMD will be in a very good position. And it will be fascinating to see how Intel responds with Ice Lake and other future processors, and not just the mainstream, but also uh, the X299 platform as well. It's clear that Intel were not expecting the Zen architecture to offer the performance it does, offer the value that it does. And I still believe Intel will be competitive. I believe that they're going to get back on track because it is Intel. And I know that's a bit of a cheesy line from me. It's like saying, oh, well, it's Intel. But there's a reason that they've been around for so long. Just like now when they've just opened an entire division focused on GPU research in India, and they've put millions, hundreds of millions into the research of the graphics. And they're telling us that they're going to have a competitive GPU product by 2020. It's Intel. They have the funds, they have the resources, and they quite simply have the know-how, or they can afford to buy in the know-how to make themselves competitive. After all, now they've got Jim Keller working for them again. But I'm focused on the here and now and how Zen 2 and their myriad of processes, which are going to be part and parcel of that, are going to compete. And quite frankly, I believe it's going to be very well. With all of this said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'd also like to thank Matthew once again for helping me out with the performance numbers. It is greatly appreciated. I'd like to thank you, yes, you, the person listening to this video, for, well, sitting here listening to me blabbering on for the last several minutes. But with all of that said, 